I am an illusionist. Like I love uh, bringing people's visions to life. I, I feel like that's the type of stylist I am. I feel like I want to sit down and create with somebody. So it feels more of a collaboration. So I'm just trying to bring whatever it is through my resourcefulness, whatever it is that you want to bring to the best of how, how, you, how you envisioned it and more. Well, it depends. It depends with whatever project that I'm working with. So when it comes to fabrics and accessories and everything, so let me speak to let's say um, the magazine that I the pullout magazine that I usually work with on Saturday. So for that, I have to come up with a concept depending on each 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 week is different. So like um, the the one the biggest one that I actually worked on was the International Women's Day one and that particular one I had to come up with a concept so the concept is the driving force for every single thing that I want to pick out from the makeup to the fab to the to the clothes to the accessories to everything it was a driving force so the concept for the International Women's Day was we wanted to pass a message to all the girls around the world or all the girls around Kenya because a woman is a Kenyan magazine but we wanted to tell them that you are not alone so the best way to do that in a stylistic way was to, was through a t-shirt that had a message so that now since now I have the idea of a t-shirt, so now how do I style a t-shirt in a very dope way? So that was it. There's no particular work that I'm like, oh my God. It's just that I, when I see growth, I'm just like, oh my God, like I've grown, like I've really grown. And um, it's, I, I like, from the first music video, Odongo, which I was the stylist, I was the model, I was the makeup artist, to um, Calvo Mistari, um, the one he shot with Patricia Kihoro. Um, there, there was also, then after that, I grew a little bit more to MDQ. Um, from MDQ, I grew a little bit more to Nameless, um, to like, it's it's just, I, I just love it. And those are just music videos. Um, as to styling, the, as to like styling, like editorial work, I have worked um, like in Eve Woman for like um, the past four years. And I worked under one boy Fimba who has been like my, she was my, she's been my mentor in, in everything that I do. So from there, then when she handed over the article to me, I, the mantle, like basically handed the e-woman mantle to me, I wanted to make her proud. And now I'm really trying to push the boundaries. Um, Coke Studio was, First of all, it was a dream. <laughs> um, I think, uh, when was that? 2015 Coke Studio. I went in just to style one client. And I remember, I remember going like, I want to work here next year. Like, I want to work here next year. This is, this is what I want to do. I want to work. I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to get in, but I'm going to work here next year. One boy Fimba got the got the got the call, so she was the head stylist there, and then she invited me on. So I, I got I got they looked at my qualifications, and that's how I got into Cook Studio. And like, like mind blown, like you're just like mind blown. You don't even have time to breathe process. to process the fact that you're styling. Fali Pupa, or you're styling Jason Derulo, or you're styling, you know, like you don't, you, 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 it, it doesn't, it doesn't process because there's somebody else 
coming like coming next so you, you don't really get i think the only time i got to process the fact that i'm working at cook studio was when i was signing the contract and after after the show ended i was like i'm going to work at cook studio and then when the show ended was oh my god did i just we just finished like did i just did i did i like you know so it was it was it was such a great experience. I worked with such a great team. Wamboy Fimba, Brian Babu, Brian Emery. These are like the top stylists in Kenya, and I got to work with them. So it was such a great working team. It's gonna sound so cliche, but I think my mom, like, I think she's the hugest inspiration. You always have to live on the edge of everything that you do. So I saw that with her. She threw me on the edge of it. And then now I try and climb back the rope and try and figure myself out from there. And it's such a great learning tool. And I think that's how everybody should live their life. You should always live on the edge. Don't get too comfortable. If you get comfortable, like ask yourself, what is it that you are not doing that you can actually be be doing like that's gonna be at the edge of your seat that's gonna be like okay i'm here so now how do i figure myself out to there <laughs>